Welcome back to episode X, episode 10 of uh, The Money Talks. Since it's episode 10, we've got an amazing uh, funder and who was previously a founder to join us today. Hey, Sanjay, how are you? Pretty well. Uh, how are you, Anirudh? Good Thanks for good, having good. me on your show. Thanks for joining us. Good to have 100x a couple of times over, right? <laughs> on the show. So, so how are things, Sanjay? We have 100x entrepreneurs. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm sure there's there's so many entrepreneurs joining in right now that I'm mm-hmm. sure we'll probably find at least one or two worth 100x. So Sanjay, wh- why don't we start off as the audience gets warmed up? You know what's happening uh, with the world of Sanjay Mehta and with 100x. Uh, working hard, uh, trying to see how we can announce the class too. We are very near. Very soon, we would be announcing our uh, neck of companies. So working hard on that. Uh, and and starting the new class, class three. That's the whole uh, agenda for uh, coming few days. So how many startups are you taking per cohort? Uh, it's not defined as such. Uh, I mean, we invest as much uh, possible depending upon the deal flow. So it can be anywhere between this kind of stuff, depending upon how we get the deal flow and what is our capability to evaluate and see how we can build it up. That, that's what we would be looking at. So, you know, we're going to get into 100x, obviously, but but for people that are joining in, there's a very unique feature, something that I think Sanjay and I have in common, is that both of us were entrepreneurs who were angel investors who are now VCs, right? So between both of us, in fact, before the call, we were just tallying up how many ventures we had prior to becoming angels. And uh, so apparently both of us had four ventures and then both of us had one failure in those ventures. And then both of us have become venturepreneurs, right? Which is basically between us, if you really look at it, we've got about 10 companies together. And then we've done 180 startups between us. So this is going to be some very interesting conversation. Very rare to get two guys that have that much experience. Obviously, Sanjay has at least half a decade more experience than I do. So Sanjay, let's let's have a quick chat. You started out your founding career as with Bespoke Software Consultancy, which was your first venture. So did you, yes. was that the first venture starting right out or did you have a professional career before that? No, I never worked for anyone. Finished my engineering and started a bespoke software company. So never built a resume or worked anywhere. So <laughs> it was more of uh, saying that, you know, that time software was the in thing and how can you build a, you know, customized software for every businesses. So on the job uh, itself, trying to learn across to build software for various industries. Sanjay, when you decided to become an entrepreneur, right, at that time, you know, the, the way the Indian society looked at a founder was very different than how we look at it today, right? We used to say that if, if you became an entrepreneur back then, it'd be difficult to get married or to get a girl, right? And today it's like, if you have a founder with a term sheet, he can, he can probably get married today. You know, we can ask Seema Auntie that, obviously, but, but that being said, you know, did, did you face any challenges from your family when you decided that you were going to take up entrepreneurship versus a cushy engineering job at TCS or Infosys? So a lot of my friends went overseas. US was big and we have family in US. So it was natural uh, thinking that I would end up in being in US. But I hmm. I chose across uh, staying in India and wanted to build something of my own. And, and the whole focus started with this software, uh, customized software opportunity. But for that, Initially, you would need uh, computer and capital. I went across to the family saying that I would need capital. Saying that, why don't you go and take a loan? So I was made to go to a couple of banks, a young college out of Kate in 93, asking for loan in computer. I mean, didn't know anything about it. So oh I was like pushed away, pushed, pushed away. And then I went back to my grandfather saying that, Paisa nahi dena hai chhod do. you know, why are you making me do all this? You know, then he just called up bank guy and chairman and then things fall in place. And it was a, a different experience. He just wants. So the learning what I had was I, I actually ended up paying my loans. It was not that the family could not pay money for the computers, but they made me do the rigor of saying that could loan low, we will take you a guarantee, but ensure that you earn out of it and pay. We are there if anything fails. So, oh wow! As I'm, um, you know, uh, so I took multiple loans. So, it, it ended up building a, that rigor of you know paying back money. That was a good experience for me. And I think that sort of also defines a lot of your entrepreneurial career, right? And as we talk about, because I think 
bespoke is eventually you sold eventually i had a uh, short stint in 1999 going to us exploring it was a tourist come you know business kind of trip saw a lot what's happening in the dot com <laughs> came back and started a dot com venture and and which failed miserably and then i had to shut down everything oh my god you had to shut down bespoke and the second venture i think it was called myudyog.com yeah so i had two dot coms one was a marketplace called iswadudyog.com and one was myudyog.com which was an online accounting software so started with a marketplace uh, which was iswadudyog.com buying and selling steel uh, which failed miserably and myudyog.com was ahead of time so both the ideas were ahead of time internet was very primitive 9600 kpps modem board right yeah, it was yeah. like which made all those so, sounds uh, ting 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 together <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> so so it was, it was a different era altogether and i was like ahead of time so lost lot of money but a lot of learnings over there never have two ventures at one mm. go you know i did a mistake of that saying that i am a superman i can do two ventures so those those were learning second was i, I got a term sheet from a vc oh, wow. and i was very naive uh, yeah i was very naive and uh, at that point in time a uh, young uh, you know entrepreneur and you, you get swayed across by you know numbers which were in crores in as a term sheet so i sa- started spending lot of mo- my money without realizing that term sheet is just letter of intent it, it does not mean money <laughs> in the bank <laughs> and uh, february uh, 2000 the dot com crash happened and i realized in april that i am broke oh wow what happened after that like Every 2000. No, I had I I started this Udyog Software India Limited, which was okay. a product company, change gears, uh, which worked across. We were the la- second largest ISV in the taxation side after Tally. So grew that business in the SMB space. Let's talk about like, but losing it all and then then willing to yeah. fight another round. You know that's very unique. Yeah. There is you don't normally see that. You know I've seen so many founders that once they have a failure, the first thing they want to do is go back to the security of Uh, a job and a salary but you wanted to fight one more round w- where did that come from i think it's a family support which uh, made it happen i would credit because there was always a, ba- a fall back right uh, i didn't have a challenge saying that are wo ghar mein kya hoega you know i have to pay back money to parents and so i didn't have as many responsibilities as uh, normally many of the people who have ideas and dreams but typically are burdened with family responsibilities my learning over there was you know young entrepreneurs without responsibilities before their 30s they get married and they the you know before they get married before they have any home loan that, that's the time when you can do your entrepreneurship because after that you've got some fixed expenses to pay and that you know that pressure is always absolutely. there absolutely it becomes difficult it's not that it is impossible it's just that it becomes little difficult to take those decisions i'm not saying that i was right and they are wrong but it's just the situations where founders are, would be unable to you know really uh, take those risk right it's no it's so true I, i think also because you get into that rigmarole right that you've got a monthly check coming in and from that the emi is going to get cut and this is going to get cut and you have so much savings and once you get into that then it's very difficult to get out of that you know and, and obviously we'll talk about yeah. how uh, ritesh obviously got out of all of this you know with P- peter thiel so what happened to sure. udyog software I- software india so we sold it to a us based entity called edicware so the founder was indian founder of edicware he wanted to relocate back to india so mm-hmm. udyog moved from mumbai to hyderabad then uh, they are a large company so the udyog is one of the companies which they own across udyog is leader in taxation and excise and gst so that point time time also it was it was quite i i would say across very very innovative in that sense to pick up a sector and make a mark on that and and you completely sold, sold your position in the company i own some stake still continue to okay. hold across but you know majority everything was sold so and I, how, how, I, i mean it was an exit it was an exit kind of thing. but how, how did you feel i think you were probably uh, mid 30s and you you were on your third venture successfully exited now and uh, must have been feeling on top of the world at that point yeah it was exhilarating but you know when you when you take an exit there is a you know little 
sadness of uh, leaving away what you built across mm-hmm. but it made me realize that you know you want to live across what was my love was not to build 2000 5000 people company as a mental i loved newer ventures you know scaling it from ground to a 2 million 3 million 5 million kind of venture so you know, zero to 10 kind of i would say across that was my sweet spot i didn't want to get into an operating role where i'm managing tons of people and resources so this is what i enjoyed so i started uh, you know maya intelligence which was the analytics and big data company uh, bi business intelligence so that that started in uh, 2006 7 when i exited udyog okay maya also you exited at you know at some point after that yes so i exited maya in 2015 but i moved out of operational role in okay. 2012 so my other co-founders were running across i mean they were a team kind of stuff they were running the business i was more like an investor into that company so what happened was in between you know as usual uh, you get wealth managers coming at your door after an exit and i ended up you know becoming a passive uh, investor to a private equity fund uh, called aditya billa private equity their first fund and what are the do's and don'ts and you know kind of at least got some understanding of that and then uh, got into angel investing and that excited me uh, quite a lot which was in early 2011 12 and oh, that I time see. i handed over handed over my uh, you know the ceo role at maya intelligence on a daily running uh, to my team members and uh, then it was a good formidable team we were we had 200 plus enterprise customers so it was doing very well and uh, i took a full time role of an angel investor and 2015 then we sold that company maya intelligence as a business to datamatics we didn't sell the company we sold the business whole business the business itself okay okay wow so now let's talk about you know all your ventures sanjay interestingly didn't really ever raise money right and from there you went to becoming an angel investor saying i'm going to invest in other people's businesses and i've always felt you know obviously looking at all the angels there is a difference when you have an angel who built the entire venture on his own money versus somebody who has a public company or a venture backed company i would say across uh, the first and foremost one thing which is uh, respect for money and understanding of finance right these are two things which is very very important you have a great product you have a great business but idea is if you don't understand how money management and finance end of the day that's going to create trouble for you so i think that is one aspect which uh, it was my big learning in terms of coming from an engineering background never did any uh, formal accounting courses uh, never had any uh, you know finance background but still my learning on finance was quite quite good I mean, today also I can, uh, you know, build a balance sheet myself for, uh, you know, understand profit and loss and ledger entries and accounting heads, you know, much better than any possible chartered accountant. You know, it's so key, though. I mean, what you just said it should be written in gold because so many times you meet uh, founders, you meet large teams, and you find that none of them understand finance, right? And they don't really understand what, you know, how long this money is going to last. And a lot of the times, you have to then act. you know especially when you're sitting on the board almost as a mother or a father and say okay how much money do you have left and when you're making all these expenses are you sure you're going to survive how are we going to make next next month's payroll and and when you've got your own money this learning is so vital when building a venture and i think i mean any founders i mean there's and, and there's a ton of founders right it's so important guys just take a finance course take an online course take a crash course but so important you learn how to manage your money Yeah I'm sorry guys if I'm getting stuck a little bit you know we've got a bunch of power lines and stuff that have gone down in my area so it's a little bit iffy let's talk about you know you jumped on the other side now you're an angel right and and when did you decide like when did you think okay hey it's time for me to like start advising other companies was was that a choice or was that by uh, by design or was that just happenstance no it just happened so i was part of the nascom uh... regional council and uh, one of the events met across harish mehta fondly we call him harish bhai and harish mehta who is a founder and chairman of uh, nascom uh, onward technologies so he said your technology because coming from a tech background he said that why don't you join indian angel network and iin 
you know that's where i i got sucked into saying that let's try this out uh, already you are a private equity lp might as well try and see if we can learn across more about what other people are doing business so uh, ended up becoming an angel investor uh, that thanks to harish bhai who pushed me into getting into angel investing so it was not by design it just happened accidentally so he was the guy who recommended me and got yeah, me into angel investing and i remember like you you were already i think in the angel investing game for a couple of years before i got into the angel investing game but i always heard that if if you had a technology startup and your technology didn't understand there's only one guy to reach out to and that was sanjay mehta no no i i i loved uh, so i was like a technology evangelist uh, at least in the mumbai circuit trying to you know work on the deals so got got a good uh, deal flow at my end usually uh, you know in the mumbai circuit at least very true very true in fact in 2000, 2013 your story interview you said your top three sectors for investment at the time were analytics media and 3d printing what would be your top three sectors today today i think no doubt education tech ed tech takes away the whole uh, you know mind share and byju's is uh, now you know <laughs> it's it's like leading the path for indian uh, so we would see a lot of momentum going that way the second is agri tech i believe it's an all weather business so agri tech mm. is is going to be and third is uh, deep tech where you know i like the most and the, it's it's like an evergreen right so deep tech which would encompass devops ai you know mm. lo- a lot of the tech side of it which uh, we can put in as an infrastructure side of it so sanjay is 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 there a recent deep tech investment that you made that you're very excited about just today in fact it would be announced a investment uh, with a- indian angel network our 100x portfolio company called data sutram this yeah, yeah, congratulations uh, on that yeah, yeah thank you so today we break broke that news data sutram three kids out of jadavpur university amazing bunch of algorithms what they built in location intelligence uh, if you read their uh, two blogs with their written across we actually ended up closing the deal in 24 hours 24 oh, wow that is very quick yeah yeah so i i mean definitely the team had done the uh, video calls and we had seen seen them on the video call but once they were in our office we just signed uh, the term sheet closed it you know the guys came and it was done and dusted wow obviously i have to ask the question what was it about those entrepreneurs that within 24 hours you could close a deal so one was the team uh, dynamics typically nobody was overriding each other so when you see a team uh, where nobody founders are complementing each other then you understand the dynamics are rightly placed mm. uh, you know when when founders itself are fighting to each other you can make out with this is not the team <laughs> where you talking over each other right during a presentation yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was one team dynamics really impressive second is the algorithm what they had built the location they showed the demo how it works across and we were we while it was not a finished finished but we knew that they this team had capabilities to build something unique and quite quite a lot of opportunities are there in satellite uh, so what they used to do is use satellite images to discover uh, the potential information which is there in that location using satellite images oh wow so so last year in 2019 sequoia had funded a company called orbital insight and which was very similar mm-hmm. you know use case was using satellite images how do you predict commodity prices right true like you know steel and uh, oil and stuff so all these things are possible because there is huge amount of intensity which creates across so let's say steel production heat in- intensity you can measure through uh, satellite images or uh, oil if i have to measure i can do go through the cylinder uh, you know shadows the cylinder uh, going up and down where the oil is stored so uh, th- these guys had very similar uh, algorithms using satellite images so uh, amazing it was a tech which which made us t- take the decision the differentiator. And, the team, and the team the way you put it right i mean there, there was a very definite business thought behind it it wasn't just great tech but they had thought through the business side of it as well from what it yeah. sounds so I, i'll take a couple of audience questions uh, there's a question from bhagat bhavin so bhavin bhagat sanjay what would you do differently as your first venture i would uh, rather than building a services company uh, bespoke i would have built a product if i, I would have a mentor 
great none of my uh, so fa- family members uh, were into software business so didn't have anybody as a mentor uh to gu- guide into saying that how, how a software product can be built across took almost a decade to learn that this may be a connecting question i think from ruthvik karkhanas he says you know how to filter long term people from short term people in business long term short term both are you know driven across with your needs and current situation at some point in time let's say covid hit you need short term guys there is no way mm. that you can think long term this is you have to think now you have to survive now so you need those short term guys and when things are you know stable and you are thinking growth then you need people who are thinking future so both are necessary and that's where the ability of the founder or the ceo who is driving needs to take the decision basis on the long term but ensuring that the short term survival is also there that's a perfect answer as you would ever hear it that you need both kinds of people right in a business you know what i'll take one more question then we'll move on to the next topic from megraj he says hi sir what is your view on online fitness and the wellness sector uh, it's going to grow quite a i would say across happening sector lot of people are doing multiple things in terms of health mental wellness you know so it's just going to grow across and these are the sectors which now because there is an huge accelerated adoption of technology this is the inflection point to get into this spaces if let's say before covid last year if you would have pitched online fitness i would say no i mean that's not the space you know you i would or any vc would really get into but today yes these are the spaces where vcs want to invest but do you also feel it's, it's a little too late it seems the valuations are really really high but no one really has a solid revenue model yet yeah so what happens and uh, you know uh, anirudh both of us know that there will be always be a long tail of startups apna bet true. is you know we we end up <laughs> saying that which will be that one or two people who will take those pole positions right Very true. So let's take neo neo bank right at least i would say across 40 50 companies have been funded in the same space absolutely absolutely uh, matrix matrix itself has funded three companies right so <laughs> so one vc funding three companies you don't know who is you can't pick winners right so we don't know if this is going to be a winner or not but you want to be in that part select the right guys back them up uh, there is no clear leader which is defined right now in the space so mm. i'm sure time will come across whether it is going to be only you know training fitness or it's a, or going to be an equipment who will come out with what kind of opportunity we don't know that's a great segue into the next question right and we talked about you know sanjay mehta right before everything else you've built as an institution you know you were sanjay mehta the investor and a name to have on the cap table and so what was the investment strategy you started with right what was you know when you started like okay where am i going to invest how much am i going to invest what was the thought process there so there was no structure to my investment it just was half a sad in the initial side of it because there was no portfolio construction strategy or learning you know mo- most of it came across initially saying that you know how does the angel investment work so i at least i would say four or five deals i was just like a silent uh, spectator learning uh, those deals be on the sideline see how other guys are doing across the deals and uh, then found i had an edge understanding technology so that's my space which i should be focused on True. and using that background i started Uh, meeting more and more startup entrepreneurs you know giving them lot of face times i was like virtually like how an entrepreneur would be out there trying to pitch to investors i was out there pitching myself to all the uh, entrepreneurs right so uh, i would be seen across in virtually every event and i took this as a full time role so it also changed the way i was interacting with founders always accessible you know always available always ready to connect happy to give them a road map on the technology side so multiple things uh, worked across and so some things which i learned because i was an entrepreneur you know never wasted time small things like you know if i would be meeting an entrepreneur i will ensure that i am paying the bill you know so in a, in a coffee shop it's so, so true. i would it's so, so small, small things, things yeah. but you know but but always uh, would be try to be as much founder friendly and 
in terms of the portfolio construct of stage were, were you defined defining yourself and saying that you know i'm going to do pre series a i'm going to do seed or, or idea stage i know we did a bit bunch of idea stage adventure nursery but was that part of so, your roadmap sort of just happened no it just happened i mean there was never in uh, clear thought process i think initially at least 3 4 years so i didn't have any clue i was just i enjoyed that enthusiasm which founders bring in you know when they pitch you can see that twinkle in their eye loved that mm. uh, whole focus on the future it was so exciting for me to you know enjoy rubbing shoulders with entrepreneurs that you know i just kept on uh, looking at deals on an isolation basis without any strategy i think after 4 or 5 years the whole idea about creating a portfolio construction focus on the sector focus on the check size doing a follow on rounds all those things started making sense and by the time uh, made good amount of industry friends within the vc the c circle so so in that sense i think the whole vc ecosystem grew on me you're also quoted in the your story article saying the toughest part of investing in startups is gaining access to top tier of deals that can give you huge hits right how are you getting access to these top deals i know your your network of vc is very strong but was was there another strategy you utilizing of how to get access to these best entrepreneurs i was quite vocal with media and events and typically that gave me a good amount of uh, deal flow all all i i would be always open in terms of uh, if any i was never a media shy person so in that mm. sense gave good amount of visibility uh, within media uh, being written about uh, you know in the uh, newspaper uh, like you know times of india writing super angel or top five angels the idea was uh, you start getting those good entrepreneurs pitching to you they want to talk to you that i think led to you know good selection of founders and i my portfolio itself spoke for me when i even when i was not a lead investor my relationship with founders was good in terms of helping them in every possible way so i whether it didn't matter whether i was a lead investor or i was not a lead investor i used to help founders so that i think uh, gave me a proprietary deal flow and a lot of the vcs started believing into the thesis because when you give them a good deal they want to work more with you so when i tell uh, anybody saying that this is a good deal why don't you look at it it is genuinely a good deal uh, if i don't believe into it i will never sell a dud deal to anyone some of the things you just said you know especially about building a personal brand and we'll take a little, little bit of a segue here because it's so important that some of the founders also understand the value of building a personal brand like the one you did right because again you know there was a crowded angel space there was all these amazing angel investors and so were you and everybody was trying to say I- i'm different in this way or i'm different in that way but you went out and built your own personal brand so my my take uh, anirudh would be you know if you are an angel investor which means you are an individual you don't have a company so build your individual brand true but if you are running a company build your company brand if you are running a company people should know your company vc should know your company you can come later that's fine you can come last it's fine the pr the brand is all about your company so if today if i have to build it i would build my brand for 100x because now i am running true. a company a fund i will ne- never try to build my own brand right my focus is now 100x and i want to build that company brand you you want to build a legacy when you are building a company if you are an entrepreneur please don't try to become uh, you know super hyped seeing yourself under forbes 30 and, and all those things it doesn't matter it is your company brand which will create your value so just focus on your company brand yeah there's a question from techno girl 18 her question is sanjay do you place the same kind of conviction in women entrepreneurs especially when there is so much talk about work life balance for women in our country male or female there is no difference entrepreneur is an entrepreneur so you look at the idea independent whether it's a entrepreneur or not entrepreneur is an entrepreneur and secondly you know mm. if you talk about work life balance i don't see that happening with any entrepreneur if you are an entrepreneur then work life the window it's a 100 hour week minimum <laughs> today as an investor yeah i need to please understand i am an investor i am not answerable to anyone i invest my money i expect entrepreneurs also to go 100 hours a week and i can attest to that because i have received emails from sanjay at 2am in the morning and then i've seen him on on a call at 9am in the morning so i know this guy doesn't sleep 
for many many days in a week it seems before we talk about oyo because you know oyo we we were both involved in but let's talk about your second unicorn first right so let's talk about eos and there's a very interesting story that obviously we've talked about of how you found this entrepreneur and how you know that the backing you gave him led to eos and obviously the success story you have over there so if you could tell us a little bit about that so this was an expert entrepreneur uh, called brendan and he had a business in india real estate portal where brokers uh, you know bypassed or give give that inside on to the uh, real estate business so that business actually uh, flopped across because of demonetization so i was the only indian investor on the cap table and the business was in india and i i invested into that business and then business failed miserably because of demonetization so the so company had 300 plus employees series a funded wow. but it just went bust because of demonetization so the founder uh, was very quick to shut shop moved back to hong kong then uh, he he had this idea about blockchain operating system with dan larimer who is multiple blockchain and uh, that's where i again participated into that company and uh, you know uh, invested my money again into that company and that became a blockbuster raising across uh, 4 billion plus on uh, in their ico and today also it's a it's a unicorn uh, company uh, amazing runway what eos has created let's talk about from the founder side right like if what was it the, that the founder did right that was right and that could lead to such a result right to keep you on board as an investor even though after you know the first investment obviously was a write off but to still get your backing for it founder was extremely purpose driven so he had a purpose about changing the things how india real estate market worked across so he was very clear about it with with the uncertainty what happened with demonetization he clearly saw that doing business in india was tough and for, with a mindset what he brought across to the indian market it would not work across and parallelly while he was residing in hong kong you know cryptocurrencies were big in uh, those years kind of in 2016 17 so he made me uh, exposed to cryptocurrencies and how it works across and that was my first learning and then uh, he showed us the plan of saying that this is what can be done across on blockchain and how blockchain is going to change the world and he had another purpose in terms of saying that how can the blockchain be made then what bitcoin is today or ethereum is and what are the gaps over there and uh, i saw that and we went out to launch uh, eos i was there for the launch in uh, you know new york we, we did a big launch spent a lot of money we actually had eos showcased on times square and there was a momentum the bitcoin price was rising we could do an ico which raised around 4 4 billion dollars So Sanjay I I've got a question that I should ask you from the audience like what is your view on the self development industry in India I think skill industry in India will always remain people want to improve uh, it's all about how do how do you want to deliver it if it's going to be you know manpower driven industry then it's go- always going to be tough right you, it's going to be a linear business so we have invested let's say in a business called Norish K N O R I S H Norish is an uh, uh, you know online where anybody who has a skill can put their training course online using Norish as a software platform. So this is like Shopify. They raised an angel round of two and a half crores from one family office and couple of angels. They are in fact going to raise the next round. So so the, the their momentum is phenomenal, right? So it's what they are doing is helping anybody who is going to. build an online course so that's the infrastructure play but the market is for skilling right it's all training classes so that the, those are the kind of True. you know things which are going to be coming on their platform amazing stuff amazing founder so let me ask you a couple of maybe portfolio related questions right so let's talk about an anti portfolio an investment you should have made but you did not you know something that came across the table you said you know now if i think about it i should have done it I used to see 200 deals a year with every month. I was doing my angel investing, right? So I mean, you name a good deal, it would have come through my your desk, and I would have passed it. So it's tough to say, but definitely two founders which I missed across, and I was like close to doing deal, and the deal got picked by somebody else. So for example, Haptic Akrit, 
I was out there to close deal. Mm. He got term sheet from Talari. I lost to them. Yep. And clever tap, which was uh, Viz Rocket earlier. So Viz Rocket got term sheet from Excel Partners. So I lost to VCs. It's not that bad a loss, I would imagine, right? <laughs> These are expensive losses, uh, Anirudh. <laughs> <laughs> spoken like a true entrepreneur these are expensive losses <laughs> so so you, then you, you said have made this, this would have been a, another couple of uh, unicorns in your portfolio oh so true so true i i completely agree i mean we haven't even talked about oyo yet but you know <laughs> i think because we're almost run out of time but let me let's talk about oyo a couple of minutes here you me and, and there was about eight nine of us that got together and funded oyo's first round right uh, I, i've given my reason why i did but Sanjay, what did you see in Ritesh? So, if I look back, you know, Ritesh, one, his clarity of thought at that point in time, there was no Airbnb or clear, uh, you know, winner who had those homestays. He had three thousand odd listings. I mean, that was wow, right? Yeah. One guy, uh, you know, who is trying to do it. That was very, very appealing, and uh, he had that singular focus uh, in terms of building. His commitment to the business was. Visible, not that we knew ये ओयो बनने वाला है, but there was something over there. You could see in the travel hospitality space that uh, you know that there was an alternative to Airbnb which needs to be get created uh, in India. So that time it was not ओयो even, it was Oravel stays uh, which we invested it. For a couple of more questions before we get into the rapid fire, but so let's talk about what is Meta Ventures, right? Before hundred X VC there was. Meta Ventures. So, what is Meta Ventures? So, my brother, who is based out of LA, is a CPA. We met Herschel. So, Herschel uh, yeah, was working for a CPA firm. You know, it was high time. I I was start. I started investing in US companies. So, I needed a leg over there, and it was high time he got into. And we built this family office kind of pool of fund from uh, other. So, our parents and other uncles. and he got funding for uh, the us side of the investment and i i got my funding for 100x so both of us have our own pool of funds and jointly that's where we created this meta ventures family office to invest in uh, overseas ventures and 100x was for india and you know hershel's i mean i've i've had a couple of drinking nights with him and great guy so funny actually uh, but he has a different thesis i, I think which is uh, Uh, very different from yours in in many ways, and so the some of the ventures that he's funded and the way he talks about them is very different. So how do you manage that kind of you know innovation or that kind of difference of thought at an investor level? You know, both of us have our own decision making capabilities. I've been proven wrong multiple times. You know, I I would love Herschel also to be proven wrong multiple times. That's the best <laughs> way of learning experience. Very so, true. So let very let true. it right. So let him learn his way. I see he has gone. See, three years back when he started investing, to today what he is doing, he has gone smarter. Uh, you know, his horizon has increased, his network has increased. So the investment in failure, you know, is a route to your success. That's what I would say. Can we quote that? The investment to, in failure is the route to success. So, yeah. so my social media team, let's make sure we put that out in the next couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously then then you've got 100x right and you started 100x creating a bit of a blue ocean in the vc ecosystem by talking about things called the ice age so for for the audience that doesn't understand what 100x does and what the ice age is if you could you know maybe in a minute or two summarize what 100x does so uh, what what happened across was uh, you know having seen uh, early stage ecosystem uh, you know struggling founders so building a company is very hard and uh, i didn't want to make fund raising also very hard so we wanted to simplify funding and in nutshell i safe changes the way you can fund a company i can i can avani sign the document everything in 24 hours right i mean just over the counter it can close across so that is the speed at which you know i safe can help you raise money so our motto is to simplify funding for founders you know company banana to itna takleef hai funding mein bhi itna takleef hai <laughs> Uh, might as well solve so one part of it. So that was one. When you get a, when you get a booklet uh, as an essay. And, and secondly, <laughs> <laughs> and, and we wanted to you know save the time, money, everything. And uh, one part which uh, we wanted to do is there is there are not enough lead investors in uh, India, Anirudh. 
most of them them become vcs like for example you are now a vc <laughs> right true. every true. lead investor which rehan for example was a lead investor he is now a vc good lead investors don't stay in the ecosystem so i wanted to become that feeder to the complete vc ecosystem where even including angel networks like for example data sutram was a deal which we did and angel network is funding them right so yeah, we just want to become a feeder to the complete vc ecosystem saying that we as a lead investor we have a skin in the game i am not doing investment banking this is deal which i believe i have put my money now if you like it please join the gang i am there on the cap table i am going to be as uh, serious investor as you guys are and this is a deal which uh, we have curated uh, you know take it up i have the last section which is the rapid fire right and hopefully if we get it done with this we can probably take a couple more audience questions because there's a lot of questions for you but just in case we get cut off what's a great way that people can reach out to you to get their questions answered pitch at 100x.vc p i t c h at 100x.vc and uh, we do lot of sessions if you go to 100x live find me in every possible online forum uh, you know i would be visible so i i love working with entrepreneurs if a founder can't find my email id then i i'm worried about that founder's ability to hustle right <laughs> my email yeah, id is sense. available all over right it's it's like yeah. it's public if you can't find my email id then there's some problem with you <laughs> guys sage advice once again and and i can guarantee you that not just that sanjay is very accessible on twitter on his linkedin page even on his instagram page he is very very quick to, to respond to people so just make just make make it interesting enough and i'm sure you'll get a response back very very quickly so sanjay i'll quickly start through this rapid fire section basically i'm going to ask you a question without thinking whatever answer comes to you you got to say it right away okay and sure. hopefully we'll get through all the questions i know the the ticker is showing about 6 minutes so hopefully we'll get through this before we get shut off by instagram so first question what is one startup idea right now that you really want to invest in uh i would like to invest into education tech for kids in 1 uh, to 5 7 years kind of stuff early the kindergarten space anybody bringing a tech for those kind of kids would be interesting great second one piece of advice to founders about fundraising rears rears and rears one piece of advice that you received on venture investing that you still follow power law focus on the power law guys google that what's the power law it's very important what sanjay just talked about so i've asked this to a lot of founders i'll ask this as an investor today team founder customers investors in could you put them in order of importance to you so in early stage where i am investing yeah. team market uh, which i would be looking upon business model you know this three i would say across is something which i would look upon uh, then the product unfair advantage comes across uh, you know the first is uh, to get the team market and the business model this three things these two things guys founders but, out there but okay. but but the way i look upon see uh, anirudh my see there is a good saying which i would like to quote here is you know if you have a lousy team in a great market right you have a lousy team in a great market market wins if you have a great yeah. team lousy market market wins and if you have got a great <laughs> team and a great market the magic happens so that's how this is again a somebody else quote but this is ingrained with me wow i think sanjay you're going to give us so much content for the next weeks to come you're just getting tagged from our side for a bunch of stuff so So again, great, uh, so ma- lousy founder, great market, market wins. Uh, great founder, lousy market, great market team, wins. lousy market. Great team, great market, market, market magic happens. happens. Magic happens. Fantastic! Wow. One thing you'd like to change about the Indian startup ecosystem? Uh, shareholder agreements. <laughs> I say it's perfect. Um, Sanjay, if you could pick the brain of one person for twenty four hours, ask them anything you wanted. You basically had them for twenty four hours. Who would that person be? Mr Modi what would like to learn from him the way he rose across from the ranks to the top seat in the country right it's just phenomenal journey it's just astonishing the kind of the path what that uh, you know our prime minister has created unbelievable right no nobody else has risen from this kind of ranks to a place where he is 
there was Literally no is a rags riches story yeah yeah it's a crazy story so would love to hear his inside voice how did it happen at, at every point in time and sanjay i, I believe you're an avid reader or are you an avid blogger i used to read but now my attention span has gone down so i now read more on medium and articles uh, rather than books but what's yes, the recent still... blog that you sorry go ahead you were saying but still books are uh, valuable i mean definitely love books uh, is there a book that you're, that you're reading right now that you would like to recommend to people that are listening uh, not that i have i'm reading now but couple of books which has helped me in venture investing was 0 to 1 by peter thiel ultimate bible yeah amazing uh, eric ries uh, lean startup playbook super book i mean you should uh, read that uh, Sh- you no cannot be a founder unless you read that book honestly yeah. that's what, that's how i feel so this, yeah. This, yeah so these are two books i would leave across for people you know you should read uh, that and uh, how can a founder lose you during an investment pitch if there is not enough passion energy enthusiasm in the pitch there has to be a vibe right there has to be a positive vibe which has to come across right a, a founder who is not interested in his business can't make me interest into his business fantastic so i think sanjay last question to you and very quick answer are you long on cryptos absolutely i'm long on cryptos but i would love to know from you like what would be a great way to end the show if you could give a piece of advice leave people on a high so my take is uh, you know uh, uh, have a north star fantastic thank you so much sanjay really enjoyed this interaction it was a great great time with you